Welcome to Electron Line, and now we're going to do the real thing. We're going to determine the rate law as well as the rate constant, k. Now, the rate law is written right here. It's simply a relationship that shows the rate of a reaction as a function of the rate constant and then the concentrations of the reactants. Of course, we need to know the orders of the concentration of the reactants in order to be able to come up with the uh, rate law. So here we have an example. We have carbon monoxide gas mixed with chlorine gas to form carbon monoxide dichloride. And of course, that's also known as phosgene gas. It's a poisonous, odorless gas, very nasty stuff. You want to stay away from it. Uh, anyway, here's a, an example of what happened when we tried to mix the two gases at various concentrations at 0.1 for carbon monoxide, 0.16 for chlorine gas, and then the initial rate will be 0.45 moles per second. If we then change the concentrations, we get a different reaction rate. Change the concentrations again, we get a different reaction rate. And what we're doing is we're changing the concentration of each of the reactant separately so that we can see what the effect will be on the overall, overall uh, reaction rate. So from that, we should be able to figure out the order for the chlorine gas and the order for the carbon monoxide gas. And the way we do that is by uh, showing the ratio of the rates. So let's start with chlorine gas. And here with chlorine gas went from a concentration of 0.16 to 0.32. So we doubled the concentration of the chlorine gas and then we see the rate change right here. So let's uh, do that. We have uh, rate 2 divided by rate 1. And we divide the whole thing by the ratio of the concentration. So it would be the concentration of the chlorine gas 2 divided by the concentration of the chlorine gas uh, one. So this is experiment two, experiment one. So if we order it, this would be one, two, and three, so we can keep track of what we're doing here. So let's write these ratios down. So how did the rate change? It went from 0.45 to 1.35, so we have the new rate of 1.35, the old rate of 1.45, which is a, um, um, hmm, let me not do that quite yet, let's be patient. And then here, the uh, concentration, the new concentration is 0.32, the old one was 0.16. So this is a th ratio of 3 to 2. And so that would be the order for the chlorine gas. And here's an example where the order doesn't always have to be an integer. So the, for the chlorine gas, the order will be 3 over 2. We do the same for the carbon monoxide. Uh, let me move down here. That's equal to, so the rate changes we change the concentration from experiment 2 to experiment 3, so we go rate 3 to rate 2. That shows the change in the rates, or at least the ratio of the rates. And then the ratio of the concentrations right here, uh, that would be, um, oh, concentrations right here, that's the rates. Uh, so we have uh, CO, experiment 3, CO, experiment 2. All right, for the rate, we went from 1.35 to 2.7. So 2.7 divided by 1.35. So that would be the ratio of the new rate to the old rate. And then the ratio of the new concentration to the old concentration would be 0.2 divided by 0.1. And so that's a 2 to 2 ratio, or 1. So there you can see the order for carbon monoxide is 1. And there we have the rate law. That would be the rate law for this particular reaction. Now determining the constant. So what we're going to do now that we have the orders, we're going to put in a specific concentration of carbon monoxide, a specific concentration for the chlorine gas, and then we're going to put the appropriate rate associated with those concentrations. That will allow us to find the value for K, the constant, the rate constant. So K is equal to the rate divided by the ratio of the carbon monoxide to the first power and the ratio of the chlorine gas to the three halves power. All right, so the rate. Let's, uh, let's take the experiment one. So the rate at that time was uh, uh, 0.450 moles per second. The concentration, carbon monoxide, uh, that was 0.1 moles, 0.1 moles. That is to the first power times the concentration for the chlorine gas, which is 0.16 moles. 0.16 moles to the 1.5 power or 3 halves power. So we have 0.45 divided by 0.1 to the first power and divided by 0.16 raised to the 1.5 power. And we get K is equal to 70 and it has to be moles 
uh, the rate would be moles per second. Okay, now how do we get moles per second out of that, that equation? Now, what we need to do here is be careful about the moles down in here. We have moles to the first power, moles to the 1.5 power. So we have to just realize that the proper value for, for k would probably have to be something different in order for the rate to come out to moles per second. So you'd like to have k the same units for as the rate as far as moles per second, but that's not going to happen because you have moles and moles to the 1.5 power in the denominator. So really what you want to do there is have moles to the minus 1.5 power. Now notice how that works. If when we come over here, and I will keep track of the moles, um, so if we have moles at the uh, moles to the minus 1.5 power, and we multiply that times the concentration of carbon monoxide, which is in terms of moles, so that would be moles to the first power, and then chlorine gas, which would be moles to the 1.5 power, moles to the 1.5 power. Notice if we then multiply all these together, since the bases are the same, we add exponents, and this adds up to, notice that this cancels out, moles to the first power, which is what we want for the rate, moles per second. And so therefore, in this particular example, the constant here numerically is 70, but it's moles to the minus 1.5 power per second. It's just a, a formality in a way, we're really after the number, and we know that it has to do with moles per second, but it does have to be adjusted to be correct, technically speaking, for the units that we use with it. So in this particular case, K will be 70 moles to the minus 1.5 power per second. For other, what we call rate loss, K will have different units depending upon what the orders are of the reactants. But that's how we do that.